thoughts on where the markets could really be headed. Varun Goyal joins us of Nippo, uh, Nippon India AIF. Varun, thanks a lot for joining us and taking out the time today. You know, just at the start of this week, we were talking about all-time high levels. It felt like we're so close to that, but we've definitely seen some resistance coming in there. Um, how do you think things are likely to move from here? Do you think we're likely to be a little bit stuck in this range for a while? Uh, good morning, Pavitra. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I think if you look at the valuations for the broader market, we are trading at around 19 to 20 times one year forward earnings. Uh, our sense is, you know, Nifty EPS for FY23 was around 815 to 820. And I think uh, uh, if you assume 12 to 14 percent growth, next year's EPS for Nifty should be around 920. On that basis, we are somewhere between 19 to 20 times on, uh, you know, current year's earnings. If you look at the 10-year average, the market has traded around 17 to 18 times. So market is 5 to 10 percent more expensive than the 10-year average. So our sense is this year, we should expect, let's say, 8 to 10 percent return from Nifty. And I think uh, there's a lot of opportunities and scope for small and mid-cap stocks to do well, especially after a 15, 20, 25 percent kind of correction in the last 18 months. So that's where we would believe a lot of value can get uh, created in the next 12 months. Uh, Varun, uh, morning. Incrementally, what have you gotten positive on in the last one month since the beginning of the earnings season, say? Uh, good morning, Rima. So uh, for us, it, I think it's uh, more of the same. Uh, if you look at the results, we have seen real estate companies come up with extremely strong numbers. We have hospital companies also showing uh, very good occupancy, good positive cash flow generation. I think mid-cap IT names have done a lot uh, better than what was originally feared. While there's a lot of concerns about U.S. recession, but I think largely earnings have held on for the mid and small cap names. So uh, we remain quite constructive for you know, select banks, private sector and public sector banks, uh, NBFCs and financial service space in general, where results have been the best. Uh, you know, very good numbers. Uh, uh, we have seen a credit growth of 14, 15% after almost uh, 10 years. And we believe this growth might sustain in the next one year. So banks, uh, you know, mid-cap IT, real estate, hospitals, these are the sectors that we continue to like. And uh, you know, they find uh, a large weightage in our portfolios. Hmm. Uh, there is one view in the market that perhaps uh, the rally in banks may have been, you know, may have just extended itself. It's gotten a little overheated, a little crowded, and the best of the earnings is behind banks. You wouldn't agree? What makes you confident that banks will continue to generate that alpha from here on? Uh, so, Rima, you were right that a large part of the re-rating is largely done. But if you look at the earnings trajectory, even if you assume that the multiples remain where they are, I know we believe banks can easily deliver if, uh, I know, 15 to 20% growth. Let's say credit growth is around 13, 14%. We expect tier one banks, both public and private, to deliver a 15 to 20% uh, NII growth. Provisions are largely under control. Gross and NPA, uh, net NPA levels are at a decadal low. So we believe that uh, you know banks and uh, most NBFCs should uh, deliver a 15 to 20 percent earnings growth, uh, which is uh, I know going to be ahead of the broader market. So as such, we expect uh, I know this space to continue to do well. Okay, got that. Uh, what do you think about the auto space? Because you know we have seen a, most of the earnings that came through have been quite good this time around, uh, but the stocks have also rallied quite a bit in the past month or so. Do you think that uh, this space is set to do well for the next couple of months? So we remain quite constructive on the passenger car uh, vehicle segment. I think that's where the volume growth should be 8 to 10%. Uh, if you look at the two-wheeler space, I think that is ripe for disruption. Uh, the EV players are going to get stronger, and uh, we would tend to stay away from the two-wheeler space. But I think passenger car space and also I think tractors, while there is a lot of concerns about monsoons, uh, we expect a 5 to 6% volume growth is there, uh, is possible there also. So overall, I think passenger car and tractors is a space which should continue to do well for the next couple of years. Mm. Varun, hi. Um, what is the, the stance that you're taking on uh, consumer companies, both on the FMCG side uh, and let's say even on QSRs? I don't know if you have any QSR holdings right now in your portfolios. But trends have been very mixed from, uh, you know, very solid and strong to kind of middling along, you know, some margin pressure here and there as well. Uh, good morning, Sophie. Uh, I think as far as overall consumption space is concerned, there is no doubt that there was some kind of a rural slowdown that we witnessed for almost one year. And I think post-November, uh, post-Diwali, even the urban consumption was kind of slowing down. 
from the commentary that we have heard from various companies in this quarter, it looks like the worst is probably behind us. So we expect the staples name, especially on the food and the beverage segment, to continue to do well. Uh, as far as uh, I know the QSR space is concerned, I think there has been a quite a bit of valuation correction. Most of the companies have seen 30, 40, 50 percent price correction in the last one year. I think incrementally things are beginning to look positive. Uh, so our sense is this is a good time to you know enter into some of these names with a you know two to three year view and hopefully the earnings should catch up as the food inflation cools off in the next three to six months. Mm. Uh, particularly on hospitals, it, that's a space that you like, right, Varun? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Rima. So, yes, uh, you know, hospitals definitely as a space which has done very well. If you look at various micro markets, be it Delhi, uh, be it Bangalore, uh, be it Hyderabad, we have seen various companies, uh, you know, occupancy rates have continued to move up. Also, you know, earlier there was a perception that hospital companies do not generate positive cash flows. They continue to reinvest. But we are seeing that most of the larger names are generating very strong amounts of cash flows, uh, which they are using for their future expansion plans. I think this is one space which is the biggest beneficiary for the shift from unorganized to organized. I think what COVID has taught all of us that if there is a medical emergency, you don't want to go to a mom and pop nursing home. Uh, all of us want to take our family members to a corporate hospital where there is a multi-speciality treatment which is available. And the, as the you know, penetration of uh, health insurance uh, is increasing as more and more people are able to avail hospital bills payment through the insurance, I think this trend will only accelerate going forward. And as such, we remain quite constructive on the space from a three to five year perspective. But in hospitals, you know, how do you pick the winners? Because you have a few companies. You've got Max, you've got Apollo, Rainbow Child, uh, Krishna Institute Medical. How do you pick between this entire basket? Which one do you select? So our focus is continuously on companies which can generate high uh, capital efficiencies. I think what is happening in cities like Bombay and Delhi, the real estate is quite expensive. But if we go to the smaller cities or let's say the next uh, round of metros, be it Hyderabad, be it Chennai, uh, the uh, capital efficiencies are normally higher as the real estate cost is not that prohibitively expensive. So we continue to have a preference on those companies which have you know, 25, 30% kind of ROCs, ROEs on a continuous basis and which can expand uh, in a significant manner in their local catchment area. So, uh, I mean, that's uh, typically how we are looking at it. Of course, it has to be combined with extremely strong management bandwidth and people and managements who have delivered in the past. So these are the broad framework you know, that we are using for investing in hospital space. Okay. All right, Varun, good chatting with you today. Thank you very much for joining it. And we look forward to our next conversation. You have a great weekend. We will take a quick break on that note on the other side.